morning, Bucknutters. It's Thursday, August 4th, 2016. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. Usually in this time spot, you hear the dulcet tones of one Steve Wilfong. He is vacationing on the shores of some Caribbean beach. So we are fortunate to bring in one of our, one of our favorites, Alex Gleitman, live from the big city, live on tape. Alex, how is the weather in the Big Apple today? Uh, it's beautiful. I think we're in the, uh, the high 70s right now, sunny. Humidity finally broke, so uh, it's going to be a good weekend here in the Big Apple. And I'm sure there will be no eye candy on the street. But we will discuss some important stuff coming up. Um, very excited about where we are. Guys going to start practicing on Sunday. We're everyone arriving, got recruiting going. So our focus will now be on both sides of the spectrum. If I had to say the one story that's going on right now that's kind of getting underreported, it's Ohio State is basically one snap away from Joe Burrow being the captain of the ship. We haven't really discussed that much. What's your vibe on how comfortable you are with Burrow? Should he have to take over? And, and what are you expecting to see out of him in the camp? Well, I love Joey Burrow. I mean, I think he's a fantastic player. I, I had the opportunity to spend a week out covering the Semper Fi Dallas uh, All-American Bowl for uh, 24-7 sports the last couple of years. And, and Joe Burrow and a number of other Buckeyes participated in that. Um, I guess it was the uh, 2015 game, so it was uh, between Christmas and New Year's pretty much. I got, I got to spend a whole week watching Joe practice. And that's when I'm, I always liked Joe Burrow as a prospect, but that's when I really got a chance to see him up close and personal and see what he could do. And just, I mean, everything from his intangibles, the leadership skills, his arm strength, his accuracy, his ability to run the football, I think, is very underrated. I mean, he, he not only makes good decisions, but he's got some legs, too. I mean, he can run. And and then, again, I, I mentioned the intangibles, but he's the son of uh, of a coach. His father, Jimmy Burrow, is the defensive coordinator at Ohio University under Frank Solich. He's been around the game his whole life, uh, Joe has, and, and has learned from a coach. So that's that's always a valuable thing. And so I think, you know, like anyone else, like J.T. Barrett a couple years ago, I mean, I don't think Joe Burrow would – truly be fully prepared to come in and, and take over, given he hasn't played a, a down of college football yet. But, you know, I think after um, kind of just getting a couple games under his feet, um, you know, I, let, God forbid, let's say JT uh, Barrett went down in camp, and Joe Burrow has to start. I mean, they could win those games against Bowling Green and Tulsa uh, with Joe Burrow behind center. And then, you know, I don't know if he'd be ready for Oklahoma. It could be similar to Barrett against Virginia Tech. But, you know, after that, Barrett, you know, turned the corner and became a pretty darn good quarterback that year for the Buckeyes and they went on to win the championship. So I think, you know, I'm not saying Ohio State would win the championship under Joe Burrow, but I think they're confident in Joe Burrow. I'm certainly confident in what he has um, in terms of physical traits and intangibles. I think it's just a matter of, you know, kind of getting in there, getting a few snaps. And hopefully Ohio State can do that. Uh, JT Barrett's healthy, and hopefully, you know, Ohio State can blow out Bowling Green and Tulsa and get Joe Burrow a few snaps under his belt just in case he does have to go into the game just because, you know, that's something you can't prepare for when the lights are on you in Norman, Oklahoma at night and, and the whole the whole country really is watching you. I mean, you, you can't prepare for that in practice no matter what. No question. I also find it interesting that this is going to be the last year where the depth chart at quarterback is just pretty obvious. And then it's also kind of interesting to me that, you know, not Collier, but Burrow is going to be surrounded. Let's say that Let's just say hypothetically, even if JT comes back next year or, or if JT doesn't, and he's above those guys, he has, I mean, those other guys were all, even Barrett, kind of the high profile, you know, sexy pickups where Burrow was the one everyone questioned when we took him. Um, there was even some people who thought he was, a, you know, a fourth or fifth option. From what you know about him, he's the kind of guy that could thrive in a quarterback room, even around other big personalities. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, he's a competitor. He's He is the ultimate competitor. I mean, you know, I don't know. I can't sit here and tell you if he's ever going to be a star pro quarterback or all that, but I just know he's just the type of kid you see where you're where you're just like, he is just a gamer. I mean, you just watch the kid play, and he's a gamer. Um, he's a, the ultimate competitor. He's, he's tough. He's gritty. He's going to do what it takes to get his team the victory, and, you know, that's the type of guy, at least I would want, at the quarterback position at Ohio State, whether they're a five-star recruit or whether they're a two-star recruit. That's the type of guy you want in the game. Yeah, I think it's going to be, you know, could, if Barrett does leave, which, you know, I'm of the mind that he's going to. I know I'm kind of in the minority on that, but I'm going to be interesting next 
you know, that's great. I, um, it's going to be interesting to see Burrow in the room next year as the starter with, like, a cavalcade of, you know, high-profile guys behind him. Um, I wonder if any of the guys committed thinking they could beat out the guy with less, less tiger, but we shall see. 2018, we were told in recruiting that uh, there was going to be a hard pivot towards 2018. We're seeing that. We spoke earlier this week with Dwayne on kind of there's an obvious foursome of in-state guys, uh, maybe a fifth and Aeneas Hawkins. Who were some 2018 out-of-state guys that we can expect to be like the fixtures here we discussed on the BM5 for the next X months? Well, I think you have to start on the defensive line. I mean, two of Ohio's biggest targets, maybe their two biggest targets in the class, are going to play the defensive line in uh, Xavier Thomas from South Carolina. He could be a strong side end. He can move inside the three-tech defensive tackle. And then you have Taron Vincent, a defensive tackle, who's now at IMG uh, Academy in Bradenton, Florida. Um, right now, Ohio State's in a great spot for Vincent. They're in a pretty solid spot for Xavier Thomas, but, you know, it might be tough to pull him away from South Carolina with the Gamecocks and Clemson both in the mix. And he may not want to go far from home, but he's been to Ohio State. Um, and, again, you know, I'd say they're running definitely in the top two or three for him right now. So those are two of the guys I I definitely think you have to keep an eye on. I also would say um, safety, Jaden Woodby. He's out at St. John Bosco in Bellflower, California. That's the same high school as Wyatt Davis. If you haven't been on the site uh, in a while, you may have missed that. We've mentioned him as possibly being on commit commit watch the next time, or the first time, I guess, he visits Columbus. He was supposed to come out to Friday Night Lights. It didn't work out. He says he's definitely going to get out for a visit either before uh, the season or for a game, most likely with Wyatt Davis. So that will be a good thing for Ohio State. Um, and, and, you know, the Buckeyes already have a running back in Brian Sneath. Um, they're obviously in the mix for Jalen Gill, but they're still going to go after the nation's number one running back in the country, Zamir White from North Carolina. Uh, he visited Ohio State this summer. He was actually up the day of the job fair, which is actually, a, I think, a pretty cool recruiting tool for Ohio State to be able to show a kid, like, in real time, hey, this is what we're doing for kids off the field. Uh, as well as what we're doing, everything on the field. Um, and that kind of separates Ohio State, I think, a little bit from some of the other elite programs and, and what they've been, you know, uh, they've been practicing what they preach as far as, you know, preparing people for off-the-field life after football careers are over. Um, so those are those are four guys I'm definitely keeping an eye on. There's obviously a number of other players that they're in on, but right now I think those four, all highly ranked guys, five-star guys that Ohio State uh, is definitely firmly in the mix for. So, uh, if I had to go with four out-of-state guys to keep an eye on, those would be the four. Yeah, it's just incredible what they're doing. I mean, I, I don't think they maybe ever will be able to top the 2017 class, but listen, I wouldn't put it past Urban. Um, he'd be the guy to do it. We appreciate Alex stopping by and working while Steve Wilfong tans himself. Have a great one, Buckbetters. Buckbetters.